Our next speaker is a maker, embedded software developer, technical writer, and community leader. And she's also uh, tolerated by two cats. Please welcome Katni Rembor. A little over a year ago, I was unemployed and suffering from serious depression. I decided to learn the Python programming language. Python has this thing called a REPL, which where you can put your code in and it prints out the results immediately below. Sounds great, right? Except it looks like this. You can only do math and paste incomprehensible examples for so long before you give up. And try it as hard as I could, I couldn't stick with it. I stumbled into buying the Circuit Playground Express, which is a tiny circuit board with all kinds of things built in, like sensors, buttons, switches, and LEDs. But when I got it home, I thought it was entirely too complicated for me to do anything with, so I put it down for two weeks and didn't touch it. When I finally plugged it in, I thought to myself, I'm never going to do anything as cool as this demo. It was a rainbow swirl that lit up, and it played a different tone for every LED that lit up. It turns out that the company that makes this board was also working on a version of Python that ran on the board called CircuitPython. And I thought, hey, this is perfect. I'm trying to learn Python. So I found the instructions, and I got it installed. Within two lines of code, I made an LED blink. I was completely hooked. Nothing I had done in the beginning of learning Python had, had in, interested me as much as this moment. So I decided there wasn't a lot of documentation because the board was so new. So I decided I wanted to change that. So I just started working on a project of my own that I could share. It was a tone piano that lit up a different color and played a different tone for everything you touched on it. I asked the company that, that if I could write a guide for the project and I was accepted. Along with all of this, I found an amazing online community full of supportive and encouraging people. I spent a lot of time with them, and I left every day feeling good about people, which is not something that happens very often on the internet. I also started feeling good about myself, which was the most important thing. The more that I learned, the more I was able to help others who were new, and this was the part that made it so fulfilling. I really loved what I was doing. So I started spending all my time working on my project, learning new things, and helping others in the community. The more involved I became with the community, the CircuitPython project lead Scott started to take an interest in me. He said he'd worked on a piece of code that was designed to make using CircuitPython with the board that I had super simple. He said I could take the code from the project I was working on and use it to add features to the library. My first reaction was, you're high. I had never done programming. I had never worked with electronics. But he said it didn't matter. I was capable, and he was going to teach me. I suffer from imposter syndrome. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a constant fear of being unmasked for being a fraud in what you do, despite overwhelming evidence that you're actually amazing at what you do. Scott ended up seeing something in me that I didn't see. He saw potential, and he believed in me. And within two weeks, I made my first contribution to the library, and I continued to add code after that. And Scott insisted on two things. One, I was capable of programming. And two, that I could turn what I had started doing because I loved doing it into a paying job with the company. I didn't believe him on either count. Not because I didn't trust him, but because that's the dream, right? Do what you love and it becomes financially viable. Dreams like that don't come true. Scott pushed me to do more than I ever thought was possible. And the whole time, I was convinced that I was taking up too much of his time or, spending t or asking too many questions. But he always made it clear that that was not the case. He was willing to teach me, but he also made it very clear that teaching me was a priority for him. Scott did something that people in the tech industry and really every industry do not often do. He took the time to build me up, to help me climb a summit that he had already climbed. Too often people think that the only way they can continue moving forward is to keep everyone else down. This is not only wrong, it's a terrible model. The way to become better at what you do is to strive to be better. And the, one of the best ways to become better is to teach other people. As your project grows, you have to involve more people. And if you want your project to be amazing, you need to attract amazing people. To do this, you need to be amazing yourself. Don't just leave the climbing gear in place. Make sure that you make it easier for others coming up around you. I finished that library. I added fruit to my final project, and I finished the guide. And the company offered to pay me for my work. A week later, I asked to come on part-time, and they accepted immediately. Three months later, I asked to come on full-time. 
I now work as a full-time software developer for a, an embedded, for a, a open, open source hardware and software company. I spend every day with amazing people, both in my company and in my community. And the important thing is I share my knowledge and experience with others in hopes that I might have a chance to make a difference in someone else's life in the way that someone made a, such an incredible difference in mine. And you should do the same. Thank you. Thanks, Katni, for that inspiring talk.